Hi there boys and girls, Brucey here and I'm just going to do a quick video taking you through my pedal board for late 2019. What I'm gigging with at the moment, uh, have been for a short period of time, probably about a month now, how I've got this set up and what will be taking me through into the Christmas period. I hope you enjoy the video. <laughs> So here we are with the pedal board that I am using at the moment. For the eagle-eyed amongst you, you may have noticed that my Boss MS3 is not here at the moment. No particular reason why I've not gone off it. I love it. Um, it's just that I've gone for a relatively simple setup at the moment. And I kind of wanted to incorporate a few of my analog pedals which I could have done with the MS3, but I just haven't had the time to program it all in. Just laziness. And to be honest, this is working pretty well as it is. So let me talk you through what I have. First in, we have the EP Boost. This is my head, hidden gem of a pedal. And if you look back through some of my pedal boards for the for some time now, this is the, my always on pedal. I kind of have this always in the chain, always on. I just love the way it kind of fattens out and thickens up the sound. I can't really imagine not having a pedal board with that on. Also, from the perspective of using modeling, it just adds a little bit of analog saturation into the mix. We know that we're going into a digital processing system, so it's nice to have a little, just a little bit of analog saturation going on before you hit the D to A conversion at some point in the signal chain. So that is why that is there as well. Next stop is the Polytune. Why do I have a tuner when I know that I have a tuner in here? It's twofold really. It's because of the way I've got the pedal set up and I'm the way that I'm using uh, the Helix. It's not easy to get the tuner. I don't want to lose a pedal to switch my tuner on and off and I more or least I don't want to have to press buttons to get to the tuner option which I know you can do also more than anything it's a mute I can hit that and my signal is completely muted I can tune up I love the tuner makes sense to have it there from the tuner into the mini wah gone for the mini wah because if you've seen any of my other videos I'm not doing a lot of wiring these days but there are a couple of songs where you need to wah so this is is a really good alternative it works really well uh, and it's the perfect size and weight so it's staying on there next up is where the fun really starts this is where we start to get dirty so I have the Tone City dry martini to give my saturated uh, sorry, I should also say this is based on an OCD clone. Get my saturated tone. So that is my very thick overdrive tone. And that sits before the Sweet Honey overdrive. So this is my main overdrive pedal. So that's a light overdrive. As you can see, I'm also gain staging through here. So I've got this giving a little bit of boost to the pedal. So I don't necessarily need that much drive on the pedal. So why is this after this one? Because this also provides a bit of a boost for the dry martini. So I actually turn that up, but I should probably turn it down. So this is my mega lead sound if I need one.
So that is where it's all happening with these three levels of boost here. I get pretty much everything I need covered. And with a, a guitar with a higher output as well, this gives a nice bit of crunch. So we go through the distortion, then into the Boss uh, TR2 tremolo. there are adequate tremolos on the HX stomp but I, I don't use that this pedal so often and I just like to have it there as its separate thing but also to be honest maybe because I've had this pedal for so long I'm just more attached to it and I just love the fact that I can just reach down and adjust the knobs quite easy that's not to say I can't do that with the Helix. Don't write in and say you can't, you can. I can touch the button, but it just feels I've got the knobs there and I can do what I want. We then go into the uh, carbon copy. Why have I got a carbon copy analog delay? Well, I've been doing a lot of playing around with the delays on the Helix, and to be honest, I just can't find an analog sounding delay that sounds as good as this. It's just as simple as that. They sound really good, don't get me wrong, they sound excellent, and if I needed to just take this out and use the analog delay, I could, but I don't have to. I have this pedal, it fits on this tiny little pedal board, and it sounds great. It's staying. Very happy with that. And then we go into the Helix. And the way I have the Helix set up for this pedal board and what I'm doing at the moment, I just have one patch, uh, my crunch patch, which isn't really a crunch patch, should be labeled clean really. And in there, I have three effects that I put on. I have a uh, pitch shift, which I use for simple octaving. Which I only use on a couple of songs, but it sounds really great and it's always a lot of fun. So I have my simple pitch. I have a duck delay. So this is just a simple delay that I have on in the background a lot of the time. Doesn't really interfere with anything. Let me just go into this so you can see it. So it's there. There's a little bit of presence and a little bit of delay. And also, I don't know if you can see it here, the way I have this rooted, I have it rooted in uh, parallel with the reverb, so it actually comes out clean. The delays are clean and not affected by the reverb on the patch. Mm. 
So that's my delay. And then the other thing I have is a compressor. And now the compressor is actually after my amp. So it's serving uh, to add a little bit of compression and also a boost. <laughs> good for clean sound when they aren't quite cutting through it's good for all the funk stuff that I had to play also it's my fourth stage sorry one two three four of gain staging so if I'm here and I'm here and I need a little bit more I've got this as well and we're starting to peak well that's probably a little bit too much and then finally, I have my amp. I'm using the Placator Clean. Uh, I just think it's a really great amp model. I'm really, really enjoying this. It's a little bit bassy. I have the bass turned down quite a lot, but that is also because of the II I'm using, which is also quite ba bassy. So that is my amp. Don't really do much with the amp. That is set. And then I move over to a Singtail Warm Marshall IR that I have, which I just really love. And that is my amp setup. So it, in all in all, it's quite basic. There is some tap dancing because in some songs I am using both a tremolo and the delay. So once I've got a bit more time and a bit more space, I'm gonna link these two up so I can put them through the MS3. But actually, given that I'm probably going to keep most of these pedals, I'm going to use most of these pedals, or at least want to, uh, perhaps I'm going to have to look at something like the ES5 uh, to give me more pedal switching options. So anyway, there you go. There is my board for the rest of 2019. I hope you found that useful. If you've got any questions, please drop a message in the box below. I've been Brucey. Thanks for watching. Please take care of yourselves and I will catch you later, my friends.